I'm going to take uh, my text for this morning, not from Luke as we've been, well, yeah, it is in Luke, but no, I'm going to take the actual reading from, from Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. So if you want to turn to that, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. I'll start at verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Oh, yeah, that's right. Fear not to take her unto thee, Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You shall name him Jesus. You know, naming a baby is always an important event and there are a couple in this fellowship who will soon be experiencing that. Aren't they, Mark? Oh, he's just coming. Mark and Rachel, who will be bringing new life into the earth in the coming year. But naming a baby is always important. And usually a lot of time and thought and discussion goes into the naming of a baby, doesn't it? Choosing a name for the new child. And consideration is made of existing family names. People who are well known, people who are well loved in the family line and maybe those of cherished relatives uh, more distant as well. As we can see in Luke 1, 57 to 63, I'm going to read that. Now Elizabeth's time, Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son. And her neighbours and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marvelled at all these things. Sometimes choosing a name for a baby can cause arguments in the family. It can cause disruption. But choosing a name is always important, isn't it? Do you agree? Are you still there? Choosing a name is always important, isn't it? And more so, no more so rather, than in Hebrew families. And especially around the time of Jesus' birth. There's much greater meaning to the names chosen for children during the Old Testament period. And even today, amongst religious Jews, there is great meaning in names chosen and great thought goes into it. It doesn't always, though, go to plan. Some people make mistakes, such as Adam and Eve. You say, Adam and Eve didn't make a mistake? Well, I think they did. They named their first child Cain. Cain's name means, in the Hebrew, acquired. And I think Adam and Eve believed that their firstborn son was going to be that promised seed that would free them from this curse, free them from separation with their creator God. So they named him Acquired. We've acquired the seed. But unfortunately it didn't work out to plan, did it? In Genesis we see that their firstborn son, Cain, killed their secondborn son, Abel whose name actually means vanity. Vanity. So maybe at this time they'd given up hope. All is vanity, we're told, in Scripture. However, there are good names in Scripture. Many good names, such as Joshua. Who's heard of Joshua? Praise the Lord. Joshua, the Hebrew word there is Yehoshua. Yehoshua. And it means Yahweh. Or God saves. Isn't that a good name? God saves. How would you like to go through life with a name that said God saves? 
Well, that's what Joshua was called. Another good name is Hosea. Who's heard of Hosea? One of the so-called minor prophets. And his name is Hosea. Hosea, a similar root meaning to the the one of Joshua. rather, And his name means deliverer. Isn't that a good name? Would you like to have a name that's that declared the, the deliverer? Obviously Hosea wasn't the deliverer. He did help his people. And there are many other such names in scripture. Many other important names that we can read in the Old and New Testament that tell us about the character of those people. Because the name means so much. And the good names that we read in the Bible, names of good kings, of good prophets, good uh, people in the Bible, tell us something about the character of one who would come. That promised seed that was promised in Genesis 3 verse 15. Let's read Genesis 3 15 to get that idea. Genesis 3 verse 15. I should have printed this out of my paper but I didn't. Verse 14 And the Lord God said to the serpent Because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shall thou go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Thy seed, thy seed, singular, not plural. The promised one who would come and crush the head of Satan. As I've said, there are many other such names in scripture and They tell us something. The good ones tell us something about the character and nature of that promised seed. The one who would come. The one who would come and free mankind from this heavy burden. This curse, this stain called sin. In Proverbs 30 verse 4, we have a question. And it says, the writer says, Who has ascended up into heaven? Or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Isaiah 53 gives a description of this promised one. We don't need to read the whole of Isaiah 53, but those of you who know it's a It's a declaration, it's a description of even down to how the promised one, the Messiah, the coming one who would deliver his people, deliver the world, if you like, from this stain of sin, would die. Such great detail in Isaiah 53. And sadly it's a scripture that Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews are forbidden to read. But it tells them all about their Messiah, the one who would come, the one who had been promised. Jeremiah 23 verse 6 tells us a name to look out for. The Lord, our righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness. You know, we haven't got any righteousness of our own. None of us, not one in this place, not one on the earth, have any righteousness of our own. Scripture tells us all our righteousness is as filthy rags before a holy and mighty and just and pure God. But this promised one who Jeremiah speaks of is called the Lord our righteousness. Someone else is going to be righteousness for us. That's what Jeremiah tells us, that's what God tells us rather through Jeremiah the prophet and in our text we're told by the angel that this baby's name would be Jesus Jesus do you know in the west that's the only name that we've ever known him by isn't it but do you know his Hebrew name is Yahushua Yahushua Yahweh saves. Just the same as the Old Testament character Joshua. 
It's the same root. Yahweh saves. His name would be Yahweh saves. But would this be the one? The meaning is further expanded in verse 23, which says this, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Does anybody know what that means? Yeah. The end of the verse tells us, which being interpreted, God leaves nothing to chance here. He even tells us the interpretation. Isn't that great? We don't have to go to a concordance to find out what he means. He tells us, which being interpreted is God with us. Not just Yahweh saves, but this child, this one born into the earth, would be God with us. Wow. Now that's something different. This shows us clearly that this wasn't just another man-child. This wasn't just another baby born in, in around Jerusalem, in Bethlehem. This one, according to the angel, would be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. Not just near us, or above us, or access to us, but God with us, in the flesh. It's not just another man-child. Having no righteousness, this wasn't another man-child having no righteousness before God, like any other baby born in the earth, has no righteousness of its own, because of this stain of sin, because of the fall that happened with Adam and Eve. This child would be different. He would be the Lord, our righteousness. Isaiah, we've already heard from Isaiah today, and I'm going to read them again. Those two verses that that Debbie read out for us, because they are so important, that tell us about this Lord, our righteousness. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, once again. For unto us, A child is born unto us, unto you personally. A child is born unto us, you personally. A son is given. And the government or the rulership shall be upon his shoulder. He's in charge. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. No end to his government and peace. You know, governments on this world come and go. Prime ministers come and go. Kings come and go. Presidents come and go. Aren't you glad? Sometimes. But his Government and rule shall know no end. It's eternal because it's from God, because He is God. God with us. And the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice, not like mankind with greed and bitterness and anger and prejudice. This ruler will come with justice, pure judgment. And it will be henceforth even forever. And how will this happen? He tells us at the end of the verse, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. What does that word Lord mean? It means Yahweh. Jehovah, the mighty God, everlasting Father. The zeal of the Lord God of hosts will perform this. So then, what's in a name? What's in a name? As we celebrate the birth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, at at this time of year, we know it's not the, the actual time of his birth, We're not told what the actual day of his birth was. And I'm glad of that. 
because it means we're not focused on that because something else was about to happen that was just the beginning that was just the beginning of the miracle his birth, his coming into the world as very man yet very God God the creator of all things heaven and earth and all that is in them in human flesh wow God with us we're celebrating the birth of the promised way back the promised seed the promise of the one who would come and take away that stain that indelible stain of sin caused by the fall of Adam and Eve which has tainted every single man, woman and child born ever since tainted them tainted us with something that we could never cleanse. Something that we could never take away. Even with our own blood. Because it's our own blood that is tainted. The promised seed. The one who was promised. This is the one who came to make a way for mankind where there was no way. There was no hope for mankind until Jesus came. Until God came in the flesh to pay the debt that we could never pay to remove the stain of sin that I've said with his own blood that we could never cleanse with ours who is this king of glory I love Psalm 24 Psalm 24 declares who is this king of glory well, we're told. Let's read some scriptures to finish and I'm going to close with this. Acts 4, verse 11 and 12 says this. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name but the name of Jesus. That's who we're celebrating today. God come in the flesh. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5, says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See, his birth was just the beginning. Much more had to be done. It's just the beginning. But we're celebrating that beginning. I'm excited that that beginning happened. Are you? Because it gave us hope. He gave us hope. And that's what we're celebrating today. The coming into the world of hope for mankind. And Philippians 2, 9 and 2, 11 says this. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. You think Obama's big? Jesus is bigger. You think kings of the earth are big? Jesus is bigger still. He's king of kings and Lord of lords. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know there will come a day and it may be quite soon, not far away, where every knee will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that we who know him now can bow pleasurably, joyfully, and freely and willingly, acknowledging him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But there will also be those who will be made to bow the knee those who have rejected through their life, that have never accepted Jesus as Lord of Lords and King of Kings of their own lives, 
but they will be made to bow because scripture tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father so if you don't know him today he's here God with us the hope of glory God with us the hope of glory if you don't know him today don't leave this place until you come to him and seek that cleansing from the stain of sin and then you can join with all of us in celebration of that glorious day that happened 2,000 years ago where God came down to us mere mortals in the form of a man and gave himself gave his own life so that we could be free from that stain of sin and be reunited with God the Father the creator the one who made us this is who we celebrate today the promised seed the deliverer the Messiah the saviour of mankind he is the king of glory praise his name today god bless you